Good morning, everyone. My name is Matthew Bellany from The Hollywood Reporter. Welcome to the Caring and Hollywood Reporter Women in Motion talks. This is the first of a series of talks that we're doing during the Cannes Film Festival, and we have two very honored guests today to kick off the program. I assume most people know already who our guests are, but I will do little intros just to make sure. Isabella Rossellini, who's on my right, is an iconic actress and filmmaker. Uh, she's appeared in countless films and television shows she won an Independent Spirit Award for Blue Velvet, one of my favorite films. Uh, that's probably the first time I saw you in that film, and it's amazing. She was born into show business. Her, she's the daughter of Swedish actress Ingrid Bergman and the um, Italian director Roberto Rossellini. Um, after moving to New York at 19, she became an actress and a model, appearing in such films as White Nights and Blue Velvet, Wild at Heart, and Death Becomes Her. She's also become a filmmaker. Uh, her series of short films about the sex lives of animals called uh, green, so green, green Porno <laughs> <laughs> has been a big success and was turned into a monologue, which you often perform. Yes. This year, she is marking the 100th anniversary of her mother's birth with several activities. She's doing readings of her mother's biography. There's an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. And here at the Cannes Film Festival, the documentary Ingrid Bergman, in her own words, is premiering. So a big welcome to uh, Isabella Rossellini. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I also forgot to mention, she's also the president of the Uncertain Regard jury. Yes. Yes. Um, then on my far right, we have uh, Claudie Ossard, who is an award-winning producer, perhaps one of the most prominent French producers working today. She's a producer of narrative and documentary films. She produced the international box office smash Amelie. It's an amazing film. Um, nominated for a BAFTA for Best Picture. She went on to produce several other films, including uh, Attila Marcel from French writer-director Sylvain Chaumet. Her most recent film is Fujita, yeah. which is a biopic of artist Leonard Fujita, known for mixing European and Japanese styles. She's worked in several different countries and her reputation is among the best in the business. She's able to produce films with different types of directors and different types of styles and uh, with an international flavor to them. So a big welcome to uh, Claudine Rossard. Thank you. Now the, the theme of these talks is the challenges that women have faced in the entertainment industry, in the film business in particular. So I will start with Isabella and, and just take us through what you see as some of the challenges you have faced in your career. I know, I've been, I have, uh, you know, I was thinking and thinking, because I thought this is our, the opportunity to complain. <laughs> and I didn't have many complaints. <laughs> Um, but I, th I thought of one just a minute ago, so I'm going to start with the complaint. I think uh, that women more and more are part of the industry. Of course, act I'm, I've been an actress and a model, so that was recognized uh, a long time ago, but maybe um, in production or film directors or less. And women are also doctors, are also lawyers. But one thing that I, was difficult for me was integrating my family with my career. Mm. So if I would, uh, there was a better complaint, is to have uh, women were able to enter the workforce, but the family and the responsibility are still taken, you know, the hardest for me was to integrate my children with my professional life. And how did you do that? Well, you know, I tried to have them come with me on the sets, but as they got older, they wanted to stay uh, with their friends. Mm -hmm. There was school, but for example, school meetings uh, are at three o'clock in the afternoon. Now, no working mothers, all of you, <laughs> cannot go to f school meetings, you know. Uh, in America, you can, they are tax deduction, you can tax deduce uh, lunch with your business partner, but not a babysitter, for example. All these things, I think, they were the hardest for me, and I think for my mom as well. The hardest part was integrating, having a career, and and, and in trying to integrate the family. Mm -hmm. And that was very hard. How about you? You, you know, as a producer, you're traveling the world all the time. Yeah, so I don't have a children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a solution. Yeah. solution. The, my children, uh, probably they are my movie or something like that. But uh, I didn't find uh, the time to, to make a children. Uh, so it's like that because it's very hard work. Yeah. Producing. I'll produce it very mm. hard. Growing up in the family that you grew up in, did you feel pressure to be in show business or was it no. just a natural thing? Oh, actually, quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I felt, uh, 
both my parents told me, you have to do what you love. And if they gave me an example, it was to find a profession that they loved so that every moment, you spent so many hours at work, uh, so that every moment of their life was joyful instead of, uh, oh, I have to go to work. What uh, do you love about acting? I actually don't, my, it's not my favorite acting. Mm -hmm. it's, I think narrative, na na storytelling. If I wasn't an actress, I direct, I write. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's t telling stories that is wonderful. So acting is part of it, but it can be any other uh, job within telling stories. We've seen uh, a movement over the past year or two um, where there's been a lot of attention called to the lack of female directors specifically in Hollywood and around the world. Just this past week, there was an inquiry by the ACLU in America into the hiring practices of studios for, for women. Uh, wh what do you think is going on? Is there, is there a widespread discrimination against women in, in, in hiring directors? In, uh, in Europe, probably less than in America, yeah. I mm -hmm. think so. In France, uh, it's going better and better. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 25% of uh, women director in France. So it's good. not so bad. And you can see that in Cannes this year. You have mm -hmm. many women. I'm very happy and proud of France for that. Mm -hmm. But we have to fight again in Europe, I think. In the US, it's less than 10%. Why do you think that is? You're asking two non-Americans to answer I know. about America. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the better question is, what should be done about it, and how? Oh, I don't know how. What what I mean, I'm do. do, yeah. Do I, do? I think it'll come. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it has. I have seen more and more in my lifetime, and probably for you two, women participating. So mm -hmm. it partly is uh, is cultural. I don't know. I don't know what can be done in Hollywood. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I think to I think uh, go back to the biggest thing is that you know you is how do you integrate family? The hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the hours, film hours in Hollywood are much worse than in Europe. In Europe, you have what the American yeah, call the French hours, yeah. which is you start and you work, um, you have lunch standing up, you, so you eat, but you don't have, I mean, in America, you have these incredible, strange hours where you work until you finished the schedule of the day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you wake up, you know, you start Monday at five o'clock in the morning to work, and by Friday night, uh, yeah. the night goes into Saturday morning, because, right. you know, they give you the turnaround, but that is, unbelievably difficult uh, and unbelievably difficult for family because then if you let alone traveling uh, for film or being on location so I think a lot of women cannot be directors mm -hmm. because they have children and they have to take care of them and if that isn't addressed first right uh, what throughout your careers what has been the biggest change you've seen from when you started to where things are now you know it's difficult from a point of view of an actress because an actress I mean Shakespeare didn't allow actresses. <laughs> there were men dressed up as actresses, but once that was over, actresses had a prominent role in films mm -hmm. and in fashion. I think in the cosmetic world, there is more and more uh, at the um, uh, executive level, there are more and more women. Mm -hmm. They weren't there 20, 30 years ago when right. I was modeling. You've been outspoken about how the opportunities for beauty and endorsements stopped at around age 40. Right. And do you think that's still the case or have yes. there been have no. there been changes cuz you see you <laughs> see you see more more actresses of certain age that that maintain those beauty contracts now. Is that is that because the celebrity matters more or is that because mm -hmm. the yeah. tone has changed? Yes, I think it is twist it changes from I think in the beauty business before there was just this uh, beauty but anonymous that people didn't know who they were you mm -hmm. dreamed ah oh, this beautiful woman who was who she now a lot of uh, the contract for the big uh, cosmetic houses or the big designers house are held by actresses that is a big change mm -hmm. since the 80s and actresses because they carry the charisma and the celebrity they um, they might work into their 40s but after 45 50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's still, still some, some way to go. Who are some actresses or filmmakers that you consider role models for people who are just starting out in the business today? 
as a as a producer, um, I don't ask to myself if it's a problem to be a woman. I just tried to do my my work the best, and was uh, really motivated and really strong and really optimistic and fighting all the time uh, to do the movie I want to see on the screen. I didn't um, thinking about the, the problem to be a woman or oh, no. Mm. That's incredible because when uh, Kirin invited me here, um, I was really proud to be with you. And I was thinking, uh, what, what was uh, my problem? Uh, how I, I did my work, how I made my movie, it's uh, 30 years ago now, and I have no answer. I don't ask the question to myself. And I find some friend around me, uh, a man, and a man like uh, Daniel Toscan Duplantier, he was fantastic. Uh, Alain Terzian is fantastic. They help me all together. Because when I produced Betty Blue, which is my first movie with Jean-Jacques Benex, I didn't know anybody. I come from commercial, you know. And a uh, lot of people are thinking, I'm just a crazy woman. <laughs> and I'm sure. They look at me like that and say, why? She will produce uh, Benex, which is uh, not an easy director. Nobody wants to do the movie with me. I put my money in the movie for 50%. And all the financial uh, say that she, she will go on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that how you got the job? How, how did you get that first job as producer, make that transition? I start to be a producer in the commercial part. And uh, the first man who helped me a lot is a very famous person an attainable person called Jacques Tati. Oh, wow. It's just a crazy story. Uh, I, I have a consultation for a commercial for Typhoon Gervais, it's a, it's a yacht. And I propose Jacques Tati, but I have to find it. At that. So I'm reading after Jacques Tati, uh -huh. and he said, no, I'm not, I'm not uh, to sell, for sell. For sell. No, 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 no. So I go back again, and three times I went to see Jacques Tati to say, please, it's my third job, please help me. <laughs> and at the end he said, OK. <laughs> but I don't want to be paid. Oh. It will be free. Really? Amazing. Could you imagine? And he would. As you know, Jacques Tati was not uh, a very rich person. Yeah. He had a lot of problems yeah. with money. He produced this movie, and it was difficult for him. But at the end, he said, no, I'm not a sale. I'm doing for you. That's my first production. Oh, hmm. How wonderful oh, story. story. It's, it's beautiful, yeah. no? And I made a, a beautiful gift to his wife. Oh. <laughs> the solidarity Good. between the wife the and again. <laughs> two women. Isabella, did you encounter resistance when you decided to become a filmmaker? Well, you know, I'm a filmmaker of, of short films, so mm -hmm. it's an odd uh, thing. So, and I never, I never thought to be a, a, a director of a, a regular two-hour films. Uh, um, I. No, me too. I worked, uh, you know, I, my Jacques Tati is Robert Redford, <laughs> 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 that uh, created uh, um, a whole uh, institution, which is the Sandance, mm -hmm. where is the festival, there is the institution, there is the television channel that supports uh, alternative or experiments in films. And that's how I started to direct my short films. You saw a film that I did on my father uh, when he was his 100. Uh, uh, anniversary, which I uh, uh, almost self-financed, uh, and uh, it was called My Dad is 100 Years Old, and uh, Bob liked it, so he bought it for Sandance Channel, and then since they always help either, I was a young director, but sometimes they help also people that want to change career within the industry, so I wanted to, he thought that I wanted to direct, I didn't know, but he was right, I liked it a lot, and so I made my 
series of short films that became quite successful in the internet. Mm -hmm. And now it has evolved <laughs> into a monologue. Now I'm doing this all, all the time. I so. went back to university to study biology. Oh. So now it's a whole new life for me. <laughs> so yes, Radford and his vision, he wasn't, uh, um, you know, he wasn't helping me personally like a, like a, a foster parent, but his he created an institution that helps um, right. people evolve their career. Now, your mother has been a, such a huge figure in Cannes. Her face is over yes, our shoulders everywhere. right now. Um, the new documentary, what was your role in that? You, didn't, you yeah. didn't direct it, No. but what was your involvement in it? We have created one of the biggest archive on, on a Hollywood actress. My mom is particularly important, I think, uh, because she had equally an enormous career in Europe and an enormous career in Hollywood. And mm -hmm. so maybe more than any other actress, she embraces these two continents. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she spoke five languages and worked in five languages. Oh, uh, could, yeah. Fantastic. Well, yes, fantastic, nice. yeah. And so uh, when mother died in 82, we decided she had, she was very Swedish and very orderly, so she had all her paper in order, and she always knew um, that what she had done counted, and it was an art. And so she did leave it saying, maybe, maybe at the time there weren't film archives, there weren't uh, <laughs> film museums, but she kept her own paper as knowing that there was some value to it. Hmm. So we donated everything to the Wesleyan University, where Janine Basinger is one of the major person on film uh, conservation. And so we opened the archive to Stig Bjorkman, who directed the documentary, so he could access uh, photos, letters, diaries. Uh, so the documentary is very um, personal, but it isn't there's not going to be any revelation that you don't, you know, in the terms of gossiping uh, things. Mother, you know, we are not interested, and Mother was not interested in that. But for sure, it's a portrait of a woman uh, and an artist mm -hmm. in this century. That was the purpose of the documentary. I think that having Mama in Cannes, uh, it's not only an incredible honor, and I said yesterday, as I was walking up the oh, yes. red carpet with Mama Enormous, <laughs> when I arrived up to Thierry Frémaux, I said, Thierry, I don't miss her anymore. <laughs> 30 years since she died, she's so present, it's wonderful. But besides this feeling as a, as a daughter, I think that what we want to say is that film is so important in our culture of this last century. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, having integrated uh, also classic film to the festival, having cinema now that show old films. As we read old books, we read Tolstoy, we read Steinbeck, we read people. So the same has to be for films. Mm -hmm. Do you keep records yourself? Do you keep your papers and your <laughs> effects like that the same way? No, not, no, no, I have to say no, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. um, I worked so hard at Mama's archive that I thought, I'm going to leave, leave it easier for my children, so I throw everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was how, hard to collect everything. <laughs> how do you compare the opportunities that you've had to the opportunities that she had? But again, acting, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's to be the, the, the president of a studio, to, uh, to run a, a big company. Uh, it's at the, at the executive level that mm -hmm. there are still more men than women, but mm -hmm. actresses and model actually model are more paid than men, mm -hmm. than male male. I think this is the only job where women are paid more than, than men. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I can't say as an actress, as an actress I've been discriminated. There was no man that took my job right. yet. Claudia, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you've worked in several countries with different international directors. Are there particular countries that are better for women to work in or more get more opportunities? I think it's France. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. I just I'm just finishing a movie in Japan. And in Japan it's it's for the woman. You know, it's it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. That's why I would like to help Japan as a woman. How so? Give us an example of something that that surprised you about working in because Japan. On the crew uh, there was a probably three women, just Incredible. that's all. Uh, they have a lot of work to do in, the, in this country 
for women, uh, Europe is the best place, it's sure. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to help the, the woman and the, the other country to produce Iranian movie or something mm -hmm. like that with a woman, which may be very happy. Do you consider yourselves mentors for people that are coming up on the film sets you're working on? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it will, it will be very happy for that. Um, yes, uh, yes, because when I start, uh, it was uh, 20 years ago or more, uh, I was really alone. Uh, we was uh, three, Margaret Mengos, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting person. Christine Gouzrenal, she was a very f fantastic woman. And um, I, I arrived just like that with an occasion, as I said before. And uh, now I realize it was really, uh, really special. And it was really p few women at this period. Now it's, it's better, thank you. But I'm very happy when I see a, a young producer going well. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, like uh, Sylvie Piala, for example. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah. Sylvie Piala with, with uh, her, yeah. uh, uh, her yeah. husband, because yes. I was really friend with uh, Maurice, Maurice and her. And now she she gave, she win two years the best producer. Yeah. So that makes me very 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 happy. She is fantastic. She's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she is very angry all the time. <laughs> and she's not like me. Uh -huh. I'm a very quiet person, but Sylvie is wrong. <laughs> mm. And she, she shows how she's on the way. <laughs> she's fun, very fantastic. And um, now we have a very more, more, more good producer, French producer. And the producer of Lars von Trier, for example, yeah. she is a very interesting woman. Also, Maria. Mm -hmm. She must be. Yeah, she is. Oh, yes, <laughs> because uh, she's like me. I, pr I work with a, a very fantastic director, very talented person, but always a little bit difficult. But it's normal. When, when you are a good artist, a great artist, it's normal to be exigent or yeah. perfectionist. And, but uh, when you love them, them work, uh, you, are, you have to be hand to hand and you have to be an entity together, I think. Great artists are often difficult. <laughs> well, I think they're not difficult by nature, but no, they're difficult no. because they have a unique uh, vision, a unique mm -hmm. point of view, and so each time they have to explain it or struggle for it because it's unclear. Now this is probably more true of European films where, um, where artists uh, are so revered. Um, in Hollywood they are revered too, but I think that there is also there is a bigger machine that uh, says this works commercially, this does, you know, it's more of an industry, here is more of an art form, that's for sure a difference. That doesn't say that American films are not artistic or they're not seeking artists, but an artist has to make more, has to be more cooperative with the studio, I think, than, than in Europe. Yeah. And do you think that if there were more women in charge and running studios that you would see more change as you have in the beauty industry? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not only if we you know if, if the head of the studio or producer or women, the subject matter changes. Mm -hmm. It's also fostering an audience. I think especially in American cinema, you foster an audience of young male, mm -hmm. teenager, you know, yeah. between six, you know, 16 to 25. Right. So also the films, uh, uh, and it's a marvelous the special effect and all that. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that does it better than Hollywood. But it's a, it's it partly as the cosmetic industry or for film. It's also you have to foster your client, your audience. So it's a two way, it's two right. ways, yeah. I'll end with, um, with an open question to both of you. Where do you see the, the film business going in the next 10 to 20 years <laughs> when it relates to women? Oh, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, this is the easy question. Oh, there will be more and more women. <laughs> there will be more and more women yeah. in, in the industry. And do you think it will be because of the success, like you said, of films that are driven by women, or just yeah. because of the because further of integration? It's because of the further integration of women. Mm -hmm. Then uh, if there would be more 
if you foster an audience for subjects that are interesting to women, then you also have an audience that is interested to women's subjects. A lot of the films uh, uh, where people punch each other and run each other, you know, with guns, <laughs> I'm not interested, you know, right. but because I'm just old woman. I'm just terrified to look at this film. I never sleep at night. So, <laughs> uh, but I love films. Huh? So the the reason in but you know the reason industry that can uh, talk to us. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the last film that you saw you re that you really loved? I loved the film that I saw last night. Yeah. I thought it was mar marvelous. Mm. Yeah. yeah, really, really beautiful film. Yeah. It was very touching. The, the standing ovation that they had yeah. Yeah. with them so moved, mm -hmm. it was very well deserved. That's great. Female yeah. director? Female director, absolutely. Yeah, she was fantastic. Okay, yeah. And yeah. Uh, she cried so yeah. much. Yeah. And, and the, the son was uh, crying behind Johnny her, so sweet. Yes. The son was yes. so touching. So, so fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and advice that you would give to, to female producers, what would, what would it be? To be natural. Don't try to fight. Don't try to be too strong. Mm -hmm. Play with your a tool. Play with your tools, your what tools, you have. Yeah, what mm -hmm. you have. With your character. And don't think too much. <laughs> it will work. <laughs> Don't ask to yourself too many questions. That's my recommendation. Interesting. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's I, I go. think the go mentality, <laughs> the mentality is changing. Yeah. No. When I saw Catherine Biglow, yeah, in America, yeah, yeah. so incredible woman, yeah. women, yeah. Yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and, but her movies are, are not are very, you know, guns and shooting and those But there is a feminist touch to it. You think so? Oh mm -hmm. my god, that fight between the men that totally makes fun of them, that's very I mean it's from a woman <laughs> point of view. They punch each other and they like it. Right. It yeah. was very, very funny. I thought that's mm -hmm. where I saw the woman's point of view. Okay. I was uh, yeah. really surprised the woman do that. Uh, so wonderful. Oh, oh my wonderful woman. Yeah. Incredible. All right, I'd like to thank our guests today and thank, thank everyone for thank coming you. to the uh, Caring Hollywood Porter Women in Motion series. Thank you very much. Thank you. This thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.